Wow! That was shit. I'd rather do that 20 more times in a row. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. 25 more times in a row before I ever watch this fucking bullshit again. I promised my dad I would find his best friends. I know them. Do they still live here? No. How do we find them? They will come for the reunion. Did they tell you they're coming? No. Actually, actually, just replay what I said last week in my Equalizer 3 review. So is anyone clamoring for this to be a trilogy? By the way, I'm only dressed like this because it hurts to go down the stairs. Carpet stairs, in fact! This is the third film, and then now, for whatever fucking reason, my big fat Greek wedding trilogy. And here, writer and second time director Nia Vardalos asks, Wait a minute, wait a minute. You want to see a movie? With, like, story and characters? Fuck that! I'm just gonna take some of the Greek wedding cast to Greece and film them doing shit. Now when it comes to the first two films, which I actually just watched for the first time the other day, they're definitely not my thing, but I actually did find the first one to be very likable. I did laugh a few times, I love the whole bit with Windex, it's very quotable, the characters are likable and funny, and I'm glad I watched it. The second one, on the other hand, is a years later comedy sequel that has no point to exist, and all it does is make callbacks to the original, it's full of so many sitcom gags, and it's very forgettable. But I still liked watching these characters, there are a few sweet moments, and one or two things that did get a small laugh out of me. Now when it comes to this newest film, I very much mean it when I say that this is not a fucking movie! There is no story, no characters, no actual writing, and above all else, no reason for this to exist! I was being deadly serious when I say I think Nia Vardalos just went to Greece with the Greek wedding cast and told them to do stuff while she followed them around with a camera. And there are also so many red flags going in that this was going to be terrible. First off, there was no Rotten Tomatoes score until around the point when the movie started for me. I never once saw a trailer for this, not even online. I mean, I knew it was coming out, but I'm used to seeing like one to two, maybe even three movies a week, and I never got the trailer for this in front of anything. And then the last thing is that the movie immediately starts off with a montage of showing pictures of moments from the first two movies, but mostly the first one. So it was just like, uh, 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 remember this? Oh, how can you forget that iconic moment? Uh, oh, you gotta remember this. You love that part, right? Retribution? We gotta talk. I, I am so sorry for everything that I said. And because of that, I probably need to update that thumbnail. And probably that title. But even though I didn't know much about the movie going in, I could pick up a few little hints from the poster. Um, I don't see the dad. I'm assuming he died. And, uh, the tagline indicates that they're going to Greece. Am I right? Tell me I'm right. And then after that whole picture montage, the movie kind of weirdly starts out depressing. Because not only is Tula's dad dead, but also the mom has dementia and can't remember who her daughter is, but the quote-unquote movie just shrugs it off as a joke, and that's barely ever mentioned again. Ha ha? That's... that's honestly really freaking sad. And as a comedy, I think the worst types of bad comedies are painfully not funny ones. And this is definitely one of those, and the one thing that doesn't help is the abysmal directing. There are numerous times where the actors look confused and have no idea what they're doing, and it gets to a point where it just looks awkward. There's one part where people in Greece keep coming to their door handing them stuff, and then they'll kiss them on the cheek like, mwah, mwah, and then they'll just stare blankly at each other like, Oh, and that's another thing. They go on vacation to Greece, and the town they're staying in is a fucking ghost town, and they're told, oh yeah, nobody's lived here for years. But then the next day, they go into town, and it's filled with people, shops are open, they're getting drinks everywhere they go, and it's like, 
What the fuck happened in between last night and today? Now as for some of the jokes, it's just like the second one where it's filled to the brim with sitcom jokes, but it's so much freaking worse here. On their way to the town they're staying in, they pass this field that has like a few donkeys and this one old guy, and one person says, man, this place is really old timey. Cut back to the old guy, pulling out an iPad. Huck, yuck, yuck. There's one running joke where the brother is constantly shaving. I, I, I don't know how that's supposed to be funny. He's just, just shaving. That's all he's doing, just rubbing the shit on his face and they're just looking at him awkwardly. There's this one running joke about this one person that they run into that they're related to in some way. And they'll keep asking her questions and she'll just be like, no, that's it. They'll ask a question and she'll be like, no. And it, that, that keeps going. It happens like, a ma not a majority of the movie, but a, a number of times here and there. It's like, can we go out on that field? No. Can we go to the beach? No. Do you know where anyone in this town is? No. Uh, you're supposed to laugh. I, I think. And then one of the dumbest fucking lines in the movie comes from a drunk Tula where she says, I forgot there was alcohol in alcohol. A Tula. I'm sorry, I, I think my brain just melted a little bit. You know what? The more I talk about this movie, the more I appreciate the first one. But I also guess it makes sense that there is a bunch of sitcom jokes because apparently there was a shitty sitcom that came out shortly after the movie's release. And uh, spoiler alert, it didn't last long. And just from a clip I saw of it, I could see why. Okay, I found one of our bags. Oh good, that's not ours. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, hey. hey, could you just grab it? Can we get a little help on the green bag? Okay, okay, then. then. <laughs> We're Greek, and he's what we call a non-Greek. <laughs> oh, don't be sad. It worked out. Oh, yeah, we got married. Check it out, my friend. Bling, bling. <laughs> yeah, it would make a good movie. You know what's something that would be funny? Is if they took the score out of this movie, the entire score, there is not a piece of music in here, and we just watch the actors awkwardly look at each other for 90 minutes. Sure, it might not be a gut buster, but like, it's so awkward you can't help but laugh at it. One thing I should probably mention is that when I first heard that this was coming out, I was like, why does this need a third movie? And I didn't know this at the time, but apparently the first movie was the highest grossing romantic comedy of all time. Oh. I, uh, did not know that. But then the second one came out way too late in 2016, which you gotta keep that in mind because it's gonna tie into something else that I mentioned later. But anyway, that second film bombed. So, there's no fucking reason for this to exist besides to make it a fucking trilogy! And I'm sorry, but are there really that many diehard fans of the original? Does anyone think back on this movie that fucking fondly that they would make two shitty sequels? And if you are that person, cool. But you're not even going to get into this. And it's not like this is the first comedy trilogy that did sequels that came out years and years apart. Clerks did the exact same thing with each of its sequels, but I can actually think of a reason for each of those sequels to exist and for it to be a trilogy. The first film was a beloved cult classic and, in my opinion, one of the smartest and best comedies from the 90s and it even led to a short-lived animated series, but that series was actually clever and very overlooked. The second one came out years later in 2007 and yeah, isn't as good as the first and there are one or two things that still don't work, but it was still very funny, well written, and it still felt like the original without having to rely on callbacks. Hell, the movie doesn't even take place at the quick stop, but instead movies. Then the third one came out late last year and was released as a two-night Fathom event screening, but then went on a little longer, I guess due to popular demand. But it was still really funny, sure it did rely on some callbacks, but it was actually worked into the story, and above all else, it was a great send-off to these characters, and the ending did get very emotional, and has one of the best performances from Brian O'Halloran as Dante. And also, Kevin Smith has a very dedicated fan base who will go out to see these movies, buy them on Blu-ray, and that's part of the reason he was able to make Clerks 3 was because of uh, Blu-ray sales on Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. So, I just explained why Clerks deserve to be a trilogy. Can you think of any good reason for why My Big Fat Greek Wedding needs to be a trilogy? I mean, fuck, the title should be your first hint because unless she's constantly getting divorced in between each film, the title only makes sense for the first one. 
I mean, at least the second one involved her parents having to get remarried because their marriage certificate was never signed. So you're probably wondering, how the hell do they cram my big fat Greek wedding into this one? Well, uh, spoilers. Yeah, there's actually spoilers for this piece of shit. So we find out that Tula's father apparently had a wife before her mother, and they had a son together, which makes him her half-brother, because they had no idea what to do with this quote-unquote movie, so they just pulled stuff out of their ass. Oh, and by the way, the dude's name is Peter. I Peter. Oh, you wanna know how this guy's introduced? He's stalking Tula in the bushes. Alright. And so Peter has a son who's dating an immigrant refugee, who Peter does not approve of at first. Then later on, he warms up to her out of nowhere. Then the son announces their out of nowhere engagement. You see what I mean when I'm saying they're just pulling shit out of their ass? But they first need their grandma's approval. She first says no, and then literally 30 seconds later, I'm not even kidding, she gives them her approval. What changed, grandma? What changed? But yeah, that's how the Greek wedding aspect of this movie was just crammed in there, even though they barely acknowledge these two, and we don't give two shits about them. And I don't even remember their names. We don't even see their fucking wedding play out. You know, if by the sheer chance that Ryan Johnson, the guy who does those pitch meeting videos, is watching this, could, could you please do a video on this movie? Or if, if someone is watching this who knows him, show him this and tell him to go see this movie and do a pitch meeting on this because I would love to see that. And it's almost like the Kissin' Booth movies in a way, except not a single one of those was good where at the end of the third one, they just cram in the kissing booth somewhere because it's the name of the movie. Oh, and before I get way too far ahead of myself, I guess I should explain why they're going to Greece in the first place, or is the movie supposed to be calling it the plot? The reason they're going there is for a reunion, but it's not really a family reunion because you know their whole family is back in America. And yeah, gonna be honest, I still don't know how exactly everyone in this family is related to each other. It's kind of like in Kanto. Wait, who's the sister and who's the cousin? There's so many people. How do you keep them all straight? But anyway, they're actually going to Greece because the dad's dying wish, I guess, was for the family to find three friends of his and tell them his story. What story exactly? I'm I'm not entirely sure. They, they, they just gotta go there and give him a giant fucking book. But you really don't care at all because we don't know anything about these three friends and we barely know their names, what they're like, and I don't think they even muttered a single word. Tula keeps flashing back to her dad as a kid playing with these three guys because of a picture she has, but it meant nothing. Not a damn thing. I... I guess you're supposed to feel something? But why should I? You gave me no reason to! There's also one or two things that must have happened in between this film. Either there's an entire movie missing, or even they don't remember who was a character or not, because they introduce this new character named Aristotle, and they act like he was in the last one because they say he was an acquaintance of Tula and Ian's daughter. And if you don't remember the second one like a lot of other people, she went to prom with this one kid, and I'm just like, okay, is this the same guy, just a different actor? No, because that kid's name was Bennett, and the only reason I remember that is because well, IMDB. So we have no idea who this Aristotle character is supposed to be, but the movie introduces him as if he's been here the whole time. There's even one point where the daughter says, I, I really don't know him all that much. Well, neither do fucking we! You know you failed as a trilogy when you can't even remember who your characters are! And there are so many times where they'll just bring up something for plot convenience and then never mention it again. Again, spoilers, who fucking cares? Throughout part of the movie, again, out of nowhere, Tula and Ian are thinking something is up with her daughter because no plot has happened in that time, I guess. So they keep constantly saying, what's up with Paris? What's going on with Paris? I'm so worried about Paris, which is the, the name of the daughter. And again, if you don't remember the end of the last movie, she went off to college, but we find out that she flunked out after her first year and somehow the parents didn't know this. How? How? If the last one took place in 2016, and this newest one is taking place in 2013, HOW DO YOU NOT KNOW THAT?! YOU'RE HER FUCKING PARENTS! Sure, she's an adult now, but I feel like that's something you should know about! And sure, I guess you can say that she drifted apart from them, maybe, but they never say if she did or not. And if I had to dig really freaking deep to find something good about this movie, I think the closest thing I'd come up with that made me go, was, if you remember the end of the second movie, which I don't know why I keep saying that, nobody remembers the second movie, uh, Tula made this fake letter for her father to make her happy, make, make her happy, make him happy, saying that he was related to Alexander the Great. I knew it! 
So there's a point in this film where on the plane, the brother leans over to this guy and is like, I'm related to Alexander the Great. And then that guy's like, no way, me too. That was, that was a little clever. I'll give it that. And uh, the movie's 90 minutes, but I'll be honest, at points it doesn't feel like it's 90 minutes. Felt like it was like hour 40, hour 45. It, it very much dragged. Yeah, I, I, I needed to take that breather. But you know what? In the end, this movie is quite special because it gets a very special award from me that no movie this year has gotten yet. So, my big fat Greek wedding three gets the covenant award of being the first movie that I give an F. Fuck this movie. As Double Toaster would say, fuck you. Oh, and just to make matters worse, there was one point during the movie where my phone fell out of my pocket and landed in some gum or sticky candy. I don't know what it was. And it landed on the screen. Just my luck. And you know what else? This got me thinking. Is Clerks the best comedy trilogy? And I think the answer to that is yeah. Because I can't think of another comedy trilogy, three movies, where each one was just as equally funny. Besides maybe the Cornetto trilogy, but I don't know if that entirely counts. But don't go see my Big Fat Greek Wedding 3 whatsoever. It's so bad that I don't think even my grandma would like this. If you want to go see a great comedy, go watch Bottoms. Why? Because it's Bottoms. And it's funny. And it had thought put into it. And there's a story. And characters. And again, it's funny. You will laugh. You will enjoy yourself. Here, you're just going to be like, I just... I just paid $10 to watch that dog shit. Well, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my little rant. Um, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Like this video. Turn the notification bell. For the love of God, don't go see this movie. Go see Bottoms. And I'll be back later with more reviews. See you then. Oh, my God. Oh, shit.